Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Adam Thomas. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure to check out the link below. Today we're gonna to be doing a Procreate tutorial, which is gonna be putting a design together for a client from start to finish, showing you exactly where I click, what I do, and how I manipulate images to get them to work together. Today we're gonna to be focusing mainly on the composition, so getting it to work with whatever body part you're looking at tattooing, uh, making sure that it fits all the contours and the shape correctly um, before you even get close to laying a stencil on your client. Hopefully this will give you a few little tips and tricks, make your workflow a little bit faster, uh, and just get you looking at other different elements that Procreate can offer um, and hopefully making your tattoos better. So with that being said, let's jump straight into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up Procreate. Once you're into Procreate, you've got the standard Procreate screen, which is gonna have all of your existing work pieces on there, all your existing files. Uh, we're gonna start a brand new one. So in the top right hand corner, click the little plus icon. All of my pieces I work on A4. The main reason for this is most body parts end up being A4. Um, so without having to adjust too much, once you get to putting a stance on your client, uh, the size is pretty much bang on. So from wrist to elbow, you're looking at pretty much A4. From elbow to shoulder, you're looking at A4. The chest on most people is pretty much A4 from sort of armpit to armpit. Same with legs and, and most other body parts. The other great thing about working on A4 is you kind of in your head, you know how big an A4 sheet is. So if you put a design together, you can quite quickly figure out if I make it sort of this big on an A4 sheet, you know that uh, once it prints out, it's gonna be roughly the right sort of size to, uh, to lay onto your client. So we're gonna go ahead and click A4. That's gonna open up a new file, A4. So we're just gonna pinch that down a little bit just so that we can see the edges, see the whole canvas there. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get all of our images into Procreate. So I've already got a file set up with all the images I'm gonna be using for this design tutorial. Um, importing files into Procreate is super, super straightforward. You just save them to a camera roll and you'll be able to access them. To import them into Procreate, um, at the top left-hand corner, we've got this little spanner icon. We're gonna tap that. On the actions, we're gonna go on to add, and then we're gonna go insert photo. So like I say, I've got this folder already set up with the five images that I'm gonna be using today. Uh, I've got my arm template outline, which on one of my previous videos, if you click the link above, you'll be able to see how to make an arm outline template. This makes your life so much easier. You can do any, any body part. Uh, using this technique uh, and it's just gonna make your life that little bit easier to work out exactly where things should be going uh, and trying to figure out that composition. So the first thing we wanna do is just add that into our canvas. So that's full A4, that's because the file that I created this on was A4, so that's gonna give us a nice little mask. If I just click the top right hand corner on the layers tab, where we've got layer one, I'm just gonna tap that name, click rename and just click rename that to template. So if I just hide the background layer quickly, you can see what we've got with this template. So I've got all of the all of the background section all masked, masked out and filled in with white. And then I've got the arm section completely hidden away and rubbed out and erased. Uh, that's gonna allow us to drop all of our other design elements underneath that. And it's just gonna show us the bits that we wanna see uh, and allow us to create that composition. So I'm just gonna put the background layer back on. Uh, we're going to go back to the top left corner, click the spanner icon, click insert photo again. I'm going to go into my folder and I'm just going to drop in these four other images. So we've got this nice portrait. Uh, again, spanner icon, insert photo. I've got this, uh, this freak show sign. We're going to click the spanner icon again, insert photo. Got this silhouette of a dancer. And the final one is just a nice little background element. So because I'm a mainly deal with black and gray, um, from a tattooing point of view, all my designs are obviously all black and gray. So we're gonna start off by making all of these monotone, getting rid of all the color, and then just adjusting all the levels to make sure they're as punchy as what I want them to be. Uh, so the main reason why I do the uh, adjust the levels is so that I can get the dark elements, like the black elements, as dark as possible, which is gonna represent my black ink once I get into the tattooing and then I want to get those tones to work according according to how I work my gray washes. So I have a dark medium wash setup plus white for highlights. Um, so I just want those tones to be uh, as close to what I want them to look like from the tattoo, just so I'm not having to try and translate anything during the process. 
which is just gonna make my life that little bit more difficult and time consuming once I get into the tattoo. So if I can do all the hard work during the design process, the end product's just gonna be so much easier. So to turn this black and gray, uh, we're gonna go up to the top left corner and we're gonna click this little magic wand button. That's gonna give us all the adjustments. The top one where it says hue, saturation and brightness, we're gonna tap that, click layer, which is gonna affect the whole layer that we've currently got selected. So we're currently on this background layer. Uh, at the bottom, we've got saturation currently set to 50%. We're gonna slide that all the way over to none. That's gonna turn us black and gray. We're gonna go back up to the top and click the wand button again. That's again gonna bring the adjustments down. We're gonna go on to curves. This is gonna adjust um, all of our dark, medium, and light tones. So looking at this little graph at the bottom, uh, the little blue button on the left-hand side, that represents all your black elements. The one on the right represents the white elements. What we're going to do is we're just going to drop another one right in the middle just by clicking it and we're just going to drag that down just until we've got some elements that are really solid black uh, and then we've got some nice little punchy white elements. For me that's pretty much how I'd want the look and feel of it to be once I get into the tattoo process uh, to make my life really straightforward, really easy, knowing that those black strips are going to be nice solid black. So we're going to click on the top right hand corner on the layers tab and then we're just going to click the little tick icon on the right hand side that's going to hide that layer we're then going to go down to the layer underneath it which is the little silhouette layer and again this is a pretty much a black and gray image however it is technically a color image so the grays in this are slightly purple so we're just going to for the sake of uh, consistency we're just going to make this uh, black and gray again and slightly adjust the tones we're not going to need to do much adjustment because it is just a silhouette um, but we can just go through the process again so on the top left hand corner click the magic wand hue saturation and brightness click the layer drop the saturation down to zero you can slightly see the change in tone so this is going to allow us to blend everything together a little bit clearer and it's not going to look um, like the odd one out that's slightly got a sort of a purpley tinge to it uh, we're going to click the magic wand again, go on to curves, click layer, we're going to drop another little button in the middle, uh, we're just going to pull that down just to make the, uh, the background just that little bit punchier, make that silhouette pop out a little bit more. Top right hand corner, we're going to click the layers tab, we're going to click the little tick icon on, the, uh, on this layer, that's going to hide it, and then we're going to select the layer below, which is the sign. Again, we're going to click in the top left hand corner, click the wand button, Hue, saturation and brightness, click the layer tab and we're going to drop that saturation all the way down to zero. Then we're going to click the wand icon again, go on to curves, layer, drop a little button in the middle and we're just going to pull that down just until everything's exactly where I want it to be. So this one's a little bit more difficult just because we've got a few other elements on the right hand side that are going quite dark. Um, just to bump them up a little bit we're going to drop another little button over towards the right hand side and we're just going to pull that down just so it's slightly more grey. You can add as many little points in this as you want and you can manipulate it to any, uh, in any different which ways just so you can get those blacks to where you want the blacks to be, the whites where you want those to be and those grey bits which are sort of located sort of in the middle of the graph. You can start manipulating all those different elements until you get it looking exactly how you think it's going to be easiest to read once you get into the tattoo process. For me, this is pretty much where I want to be. I've got some nice solid grays across there, which are going to be mainly mid-tones. Uh, I've got some nice black elements, which are going to help me to, uh, to put in some nice solid black to hold the piece and give it that longevity. Top right-hand corner, we're going to click the Layers tab. We're going to hide that sign layer. We're going to click on the portrait again one button, hue saturation and brightness, click the layer tab, drop the saturation down to zero. Back up to the top, click the wand icon, go down to curves, layer, and then this one we are gonna drop in two. So where we've got the five vertical lines on the graph, we're gonna drop one on the first one in and the second to last one. So what this is gonna allow us to do is keep sort of the mid-tones sort of where we want the mid-tones to stay. So we don't wanna affect the grays too much, but we just wanna move the black slightly blacker and the white slightly whiter. Uh, they're just gonna, those two little dots, by pushing and pulling them, we're gonna be able to pull out a lot of elements that we can't see in the black areas. And we're just gonna boost up those white highlights just so everything's very, very tonally, bumping up the co contrast and just make your life that little bit easier uh, to read the image. So we're gonna take the black and we're just gonna push that up just a fraction 
which just makes these blacks a little less punchy on the left hand side, but you can see how much clearer that's made the hand. And then we're just gonna drop all these whites up that little bit higher, just until the side of that face almost becomes washed out. Uh, but we want that nice highlight just to give us that real dynamic look to the piece. On the layers tab, we're gonna click that again in the top right hand corner. The template layer is now on the bottom. We're gonna select that, click and hold it until it pops up. And then we're just gonna drag that right away to the top. So that's gonna sit it on top of all the existing elements. So basically, if you imagine a stack of paper, that's in essence how the, uh, the layers tab works. So anything that's on the top is gonna be the top sheet and everything else is gonna stack underneath. So because we've got that cut out of the arm in the middle, everything that sits underneath is just gonna be uh, masked by all the background and you're just gonna see the elements that are in that arm section. So straight away you can see how that's sort of masking out the face uh, and it's starting to allow us to see how that could work on an inside forearm sort of section. Uh, and it's gonna make our lives that little bit easier to work the composition and to get everything looking like it should do for a nice piece on the forearm. So we're gonna go down to that bottom layer, which is the portrait. Uh, in the top left corner, we're gonna click the arrow icon on the right. That's gonna give us this boundary box, which is gonna help us to manipulate the size and the position of the image. We're just gonna square that up a little bit, move it into the middle of the frame, uh, just reduce the size a fraction. For me, I like to get things nice and oversized, so we're, if we were looking at the panel, it's gonna slightly wrap around, so we're really blocking out that panel, getting a nice big image, and really giving a nice impact to the tattoo. So I'm just gonna uh, put that roughly where I want it. I'm not too worried about the background or anything like that at this point. We're just gonna get everything in to the position that we want, and then we can start nibbling away at the backgrounds and getting the piece to work uh, as a whole. At this point, we're just mainly focusing on getting things in and getting the composition to work. Back onto the layers tab in the top right-hand corner, um, and we're gonna select the next layer up, which is the sign layer. Click the arrow icon in the top left corner, that's again gonna bring up the boundary box. We're just gonna pull that in until it's roughly the right size. I'm just gonna twist it slightly on an angle just to give it a little bit more of a dynamic look. And then we're just gonna get that size just to, just to slightly get to the edge so we've got that little bit of a wrap. Um, but we still wanna be able to see the, where the forehead's going in the hair so we don't want it to make it look like the portrait's got a big forehead or it's missing any hair. We still want the portrait to look nice and beautiful uh, and we still want plenty of space because we're gonna be putting the clown girl makeup on this portrait uh, towards the end of the tattoo. So in the top right hand corner, we're gonna click the eraser icon. Uh, so we're just gonna nibble away at some of this background on the side just so we can see exactly where it's sitting on the face. Tap the icon again, that's gonna bring up all the options. Now what I use for erasing is the airbrush tool. So I've got airbrushing selection at the top. This might be slightly different for you, but it will be somewhere in the list as a standard brush on Procreate. Within the airbrushing, I tend to use soft airbrush. That's gonna give you a nice sort of um, feathered edge to the brush. It's not gonna be super harsh and it's gonna allow you to knit things together and keep things looking nice and soft. So we click the soft airbrush, make sure that's selected. Over on the left-hand side, on the size, we're just gonna bring that down to around 15%. Make sure that the opacity is on 100 because we want to erase everything that we're touching and not just knocking it down a little bit. So we're just going to pinch that in just so we can see a little bit closer. And then we're just going to start nibbling away at some of this background. So I'm not too fussed about how neat a job this is. This is mainly just, uh, I just want to get rid of all the background that's sitting over the top of the face. Just so that we start to get that look that we've got the whole sign as a nice sort of individual element without any of these uh, sort of background elements that are in the photo with the sign. So at this first starting point, I just wanna get rid of the, all the pieces that are on the face and that way we can figure out where it's gonna sit nice and neat on the face. We're just gonna pinch that out a little bit. We're gonna go back to the top and click the arrow icon. That's gonna bring up the boundary box so we can move it again. And like I say, I just wanna bring that up that little bit higher and twist it just so that we're slightly over the, uh, as we're looking at it on the right hand eyebrow, just so you can see how that's curving over the eyebrow, but we're still getting a nice hair on the left hand side. So our eye can still see the curvature of the forehead. So it's not gonna make her look like she's got a strange looking forehead. So to get rid of those last few elements, we're gonna go back into the layers tab. We're just gonna hide the arm layer just, just so that we can see all of that sign. 
Make sure we've got the sign layer selected. Click the eraser tool, zoom in, and then we're just gonna quickly take away all of these last bits of background. So I tend to work towards the edge first, and then I'll go in and take away the extra bits uh, towards the corners. This way I can just be that little bit slower and a little bit more accurate at this point, so I can follow the outside edge of the sign. And then once we've done that, we've got the nice big buffer space, we can just quickly whip through and take away all of the, uh, all of the excess background. Now we've done the outside bit, we can just whip through, take away all of this excess. That looks pretty good to do. Zoom that back out, go back onto the layers tab in the right hand corner, click the template, and then we're back on. And now that I've taken that background off, it does look like it could do with being a slightly bit bigger. So I'm again I'm going to click the arrow icon, and we're just going to pinch that and just pull it that fraction bigger, just so it sits a little bit more in proportion with everything else that we've got going on. So in the top right hand corner, click the layers again. We're gonna go on the next layer up, which is that silhouetted dancer. And in the top left hand corner, we're gonna click the arrow. It's gonna bring us, bring us up our boundary box. We're just gonna pinch that down. So this is gonna sit at the bottom, just to give us a reason to cut off the hands. Uh, so there's a nice element towards the bottom. At the moment, you can see how that's sitting on top of everything. Uh, and it's not looking too sensible because we've got a really solid blocked edge. So if we go back onto the layers tab, where we would click it to change the, to turn it on and off, there's a little N icon. If we click that, that's gonna bring us up all the blending modes plus the opacity. What we're gonna do is change the blending mode to multiply. That's gonna make any white element basically see-through and any dark elements, it's gonna just multiply the layer underneath. We're gonna click the eraser icon. Make sure we're still on soft airbrush. We're gonna change the size to 100%. We're gonna zoom in a little bit. Now we're gonna start erasing off the image. So all we wanna catch is that nice feathered edge. So instead of going straight in and trying to take it off, we just wanna to, want to have that nice sort of soft glow just so that black's just disappearing into the skin. So I'm gonna start right away, sort of down by the fingers and then work my way sort of in and then just working nice and light with the pencil just to feather that off on the top and around the outside. So we get this nice sort of uh, darker glow and everything's starting to blend together and look nice. Now with the multiply on, <coughs> you can obviously see the hands underneath. So we're just gonna need to start blending that together with this bottom section. So we're gonna go in the top right hand corner, click the layers tab, and then we're gonna go back to the portrait layer, click on the razor tool, Make sure we're on soft airbrush, make sure we're on 100%, size 100%, opacity. And then again, we're just gonna start a lot lower than we think and just slowly bring that brush up and just erase that harsh edge at the bottom. Now I still want a bit of the hands showing through. I don't want to just completely disappear. We are gonna get a slight bit of the, uh, bit of the pad of the thumb uh, and the, uh, the pad on the other side by the little finger. Uh, but it's starting to give us a nicer blend within the piece uh, and making it look a little, a little bit less harsh. So while we're here on this layer, we're just going to click the layers tab, hide the arm temporarily, make sure we're still on the portrait layer, click the eraser tool, 100% size, 100% opacity, and then we're just going to start taking away a little bit of the background of this portrait. This is just going to soften the edge out and just take away that harsh, sort of box look to the piece. I still want to be able to see the hair, I still want to be able to see the hands, uh, and I still want some of the background just so that we've got that nice uh, nice look to it. Uh, click the layer icon in the top right hand corner. We're going to go onto the silhouette layer, click the eraser tool, uh, and we're going to do exactly the same just with the edges of the silhouetted dancer. Go back onto the Layers tab, click the little tick icon on the template just to bring that back up. Now while we've still got the Layers tab open, above the silhouette layer we've got the background, we're just going to click the tick icon, put that so that's, uh, that's on show. Now because this is the background layer, we're going to want this as a background. So the same as how we move the template layer, we're going to select 
the background. We're gonna click and hold until it pops up. And I'm just gonna drag that right the way underneath everything. So right the way down underneath the portrait layer. In the top left hand corner, click the arrow icon. It's gonna bring up the boundary box. We're just gonna resize that and then just move it up. This is gonna give us a nice background, uh, a nice sort of circusy themed background that's gonna sit behind everything. And just give us a nice sort of dynamic look to the piece. Top right hand corner, click the layers tab. We're gonna temporarily hide the template layer. We're gonna make sure that we've got that background layer selected. Click the eraser tool, make sure that we're on soft airbrush. Make sure we're on 100% size, 100% opacity. And we're gonna do exactly the same as what we've just done with those other two layers. And we're just gonna take away a little bit of the edge and just soften it all down. So this is just gonna be a very, very simple background just to give us a little bit more size, a little bit more dynamic look to the piece. Um, and an extra little element to work with. So we're gonna go back to the top right hand corner, click the layers tab, turn the template layer back on, and then we're just gonna pinch that out just so we can see exactly what we're working with. So as it stands, the elbow of the silhouette is just going down onto the, onto the palm of the hand, which is where we don't wanna be, and the background layer is going right over the, uh, the ditch of the elbow. So for me, it's just a little bit too big. So if we click the layers tab in the top right hand corner, and then we're gonna swipe with the pencil from left to right on each of the layers. So starting with the silhouette, we're gonna swipe that to the right and you can see that it goes blue. We're gonna do the sign and the face and then we've already got the bottom layer selected. So now we've got all of those four layers all selected as one. In the left, top left hand corner, we're gonna click the arrow icon. That's gonna select all four of those layers with a boundary box so we can manipulate all four at the same time. So we're just gonna drag that slightly smaller and keep removing it and resizing it until we get to a point where it's taking up exactly what we want to take up on the forearm uh, to get it look like a nice looking like a, a really nice uh, composition on the arm so with a little bit of a twist and a little bit of a pull that's pretty much where i'd want to be size wise and position wise uh, at the bottom around the silhouette the uh, the dancer looks like it's got a weird little background on and the top with the uh, with the, the circus background, uh, it does stop quite suddenly. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more, um, a little bit more of an extra darker layer of background. So we click the layer icon, select the silhouette layer, click the plus icon. That's going to drop us in a brand new layer because this is going to be a background underneath everything. We're going to have to click that and hold it, and then drag it underneath that circus background. On the top right hand corner again, we're going to click the brush icon. Bring up all of the brush icons. Now for this, I'm going to use uh, one of the elements brushes and I'm going to use the cloud brush. That's going to give us a real nice sort of smoky looking texture. So if we go down and find elements, within there, you'll be able to find clouds. On the left hand side, we're going to just click and hold the size until it looks to be about right. So I'm looking at maybe 24%. Opacity, I'm gonna want that about 50%. So I don't want this to be really solid and black, but I also don't want it to be uh, too light either. In the top right hand corner, we've got the color picker. If we click that, I'm gonna drag down to black, click to deselect it. We're gonna pinch in a little bit, and then we're just gonna add in some of these sort of smoky, cloudy elements. So you can see how that's starting to make, starting to soften out that circus background and just give us that nice sort of look to the piece, which just gives us that nice sort of circusy vibe, that smoky feel to it, uh, and just gives us that nice sort of extra little arty element, um, which just adds something else to the piece. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with where the elements are sitting. Um, I'm happy with the composition, how that's sitting on the arm uh, and how they're all interacting and working together. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is just add the cloud makeup, which is a fairly straightforward process. I do the same cloud makeup pretty much on everything. The only thing that changes is if I've got a slightly different portrait, a different angle. Obviously the makeup's gonna look slightly different, but the format of the makeup that I choose is uh, pretty much the same. Obviously, for anyone watching this, you can just do your own makeup. Um, but this for me, this is a good solid base uh, and it always works out really nice and effective in the tattoo process. So moving on to the makeup, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we've got a new layer for the makeup. So the first part of doing the makeup, I do a sketchy guideline. So we click the layers tab, make sure that we've got the portrait selected, click the plus icon, that's gonna drop us a new layer above the portrait. I'm gonna go over to the brush tool, 
We're gonna go down to sketching. I like to use HB pencil. You can use any brush you want. All you've gotta be able to do is make sure it's a nice brush that you can sketch with and get a nice loose line so you can carve out the, uh, the guidelines. So HB pencil is the one that I use. I with the color picker, make sure that you're on black. Size wise, we wanna be as small as possible. So 1%, we want the opacity on 100%. So we've got a nice solid line. And then we're gonna start adding this makeup in. So we're gonna to pinch to zoom in just so we can get see all of that face. So the first guideline that I like to do is from the bottom of the chin to the base of the lip. So I'm just gonna draw a line straight the way up from the middle of the chin to the middle of the lip. That's gonna give me a nice sort of vertical split for when we start doing the makeup around the mouth. I'm gonna jump up to the top lip and we're gonna go from the, uh, the middle little dip to the base of the nose. Then we're gonna curve that up over the nose. So this line's got a slight curve to it and then follow that line straight the way up into the forehead. So that's giving us that nice vertical split down the middle of the face, but following the shape and the contours of the, uh, of the image that we've got. We're gonna go over to the left-hand side to this eye. We're gonna go from the bottom of the lid and we're just gonna draw a line down from the, uh, the bottom of the lid down to the middle of the cheek. We're looking to try and use this line to split the area from the nostril to the middle, and then from the middle to the, uh, the edge of the jaw. I'm going to jump up to the top of that lid and we're going to do the same but going up towards the top of the forehead giving us that nice sort of split through the face. We're going to go to the right hand side and do the same with that eye. So from the bottom of the lid down paying close attention to that spacing from the line to the nostril making sure that it's even with the, uh, the left hand side. We're going to jump up to the top lid uh, and then draw a line straight up. These are going to give us the nice sort of triangle pieces that I tend to do on my clown girl makeup. Uh, we're now going to just draw us a nice big shape to give us that makeup on this one eye. Now we can't see a lot of this makeup uh, just because the sign's covering it, uh, but it is going to make your life a little bit easier when you do the tattoo because it's one less element you've got to worry about. So just get those little bits on the right hand side. Uh, we're now going to carve around the nose uh, to give us that blacked out nose look. Uh, so we're going to follow the shape of the nostril and the profile of the nose and then just bring that to a point and just hit that line that we drew in earlier, the vertical line, which is gonna make sure that, that points perfectly in the middle of the nose uh, and it's gonna look like the makeup is on the face. At this point, we're gonna start doing the makeup around the mouth. <coughs> so the way that I tend to do this is I start from the corner of the nostril and aim down towards the, uh, the little, uh, the center point on the corner of the lip. So we're gonna draw that line sort of down to about here and then same on the right hand side. Again, aiming for that sort of symmetry look. At this point, we're gonna curve that line back down underneath the line that we drew in for that split. Making sure that that line joins up and has this nice sort of curve to it. We are gonna draw straight over the top of these fingers. Um, the, final, the final version of this makeup, we are gonna miss this out, but just so that for the, uh, the sketch and the guidelines, we want these lines to be perfectly solid and joined up so that when we do the inking, your eye will see that those lines do jump up and they're not jumping all over the place. At the top of this, we're just gonna curve it back round just to give us that nice sort of soft curved edge, that little bit of an angle at the joint, and just get that a nice solid clown girl makeup look. Moving down on the chin, I do my chins pretty much the same as my Day of the Dead makeup. Um, so we're just gonna get a nice big curve over the chin. Because we've got these two little fingers that come on the sides, I am gonna make it a little bit tighter than what I normally would. Um, but it's just gonna make sure that we can see that nice curve uh, running round. So starting from the sort of the split line that we drew in, working our way off that, just so we can get that nice sort of symmetry look. Again, this isn't gonna be perfectly symmetry, symmetrical because we're working on the face, uh, but we want it to look as if someone would have drawn that makeup onto the face. And then just following the shape of the, uh, the jawline. So the split lines that we've got coming off the face, I'm just gonna turn those into some, um, some nice sort of pointy triangles. So on the left hand eye, I'm just gonna give us a little bit of space from the makeup we've drawn around the mouth and just drag that up to the bottom lid. Again, following the shape of the, uh, the guideline and then the same with the one above. Just so that we, uh, we've got them looking like they're sat on the face and not just makeup just thrown on as an afterthought. 
as an afterthought using Procreate. So that's pretty much my guidelines done. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go to the top right hand corner, click the layers tab, go down to the layer that we've just been working on, click the N icon, we're going to drop the opacity down to a point where we can just about see it on top of the, on top of the portrait. So what this is going to act as now is almost like a trace, um, so then we can follow these lines and just get some nice solid, um, solid lines over the top just to get that makeup done perfectly. Click the layer to close all those down, click the plus icon to drop a layer above, click the brush tool, we're going to go to inking, go down to fine tip, we're going to tap that again. On stroke path we want streamlining on maximum, so that's going to iron out any little bumps and, uh, and wobbles in the line, give us a nice sort of crisp line. Click done, top right hand corner on the colour picker, make sure that's on black. Size, we want 100% on the size, 100% on opacity, and now we're ready to do the makeup. So the first bit I'm going to do is the top of this right hand eye. So I'm just going to trace over this line, nice and careful, nice and smooth, just to get that makeup looking nice and get us just up to the uh, up to that side. And again, with the outside, I like to double up this line just because I feel like it gives me a nice look to the makeup. And just move down a little bit and get the nice sort of point at the bottom. Again, we're just following those guidelines that we drew in just to make sure that all of this is nice and perfect. You can see how smooth these lines are just by having that streamlining on maximum. We're just going to carve around the nose, paying close attention to the profile of the nose, just getting up to that point. All these guidelines are just going to make sure that at this point, the, uh, the look of the makeup is as close to uh, what it would look like if someone had put the makeup onto this person's face. Get this big triangle piece on the right hand side in. Again, really nice and smooth and that's all down to just having the streamlining on. And now we're going to do the makeup down the face. So I'm just going to do this line this way, which is just working with my the way my wrist bends just to make sure I can get that curve in really nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to go around and just double up that line give us that nice effect. So once I come to the finger, I'm just going to break that gap to just give us that real nice effect. Then we drop down to the bottom. And get the, uh, the lines done for the chin makeup. And again, doubling up that line. and then just the makeup on the right hand side. So again, just get into the finger, stop in the line, and then continue in just on the areas that hits the face. And just popping in that second line, just to thicken the line up, get a nice solid makeup feel to it. So there are my nice crisp lines that we've got for the makeup. So we're just going to go back over to the layers tab, tap the layers tab, I'm going to select the layer 7. So the layer underneath, that was the sketchy layer. So we're just going to swipe that to the left, delete that because we no longer need it. Select layer 8, which is the inked layer that we've just done, click the plus icon, and now we can start filling that in. So we're going to click the brush tool, airbrushing, make sure that we're on soft air, airbrush on the colour picker. We're going to change the colour to white. We're going to change the size to about sort of 10%-ish. We're just going to zoom in and then we're just going to block out all of the makeup. So I'm not trying to be super neat and there's a reason for this. Uh, in a minute we're just going to drop the opacity down and we're going to erase all these edges. Um, but by getting this all in in 100% it just means we're going to have a nice flat look to it and then by the time we drop the opacity down all of the shadows and the contours that are already there on the skin that's going to give us that nice sort of depth to it and make it look like it's really sat there on top of the face so at this point we're going to go back onto the layers we're going to click the layer that we've just done the white on and we're just going to drag that underneath 
the ink layers, that's going to put those nice lines on top. I'm going to click the eraser tool and then we're just going to zoom in, drop the size down to sort of a fairly small size. I'm going to be on about sort of 5% I think. And then we'll just take away all of the excess that just drops into that double line on the makeup. So having that double lining does make life that a little bit easier just because you basically just run the eraser through that line and then any little bits that overlap into the black of the line it's just going to look nice and solid. So at this point it looks a little bit strange because obviously we're all over the fingers. So we're going to click the layers tab again. We're going to click the N icon and we're just going to drop that opacity down into sort of the uh, sort of the late 20s. Go back onto the eraser tool, zoom in, and then we just take away any bits that have fallen on top of the fingers, just so that they've got a nice, uh, a nice sort of cut out to them. Change my size up a little bit more, just so it's not going to take forever. Again, we're not looking at doing anything perfectly uh, accurate at this point, so we don't need to be zooming in to a single pixel to try and take away 100% of all the white that's overlapping onto the uh, onto the fingers. But we do want to take out pretty much most of it, um, just so that most of the white is just in the makeup itself. Again, a lot of this hard work is going to be done during the tattoo process uh, and not during the uh, and not during the design. A lot of this is mainly just for one, your reference, and two, just to uh, show your client exactly what you're trying to uh, trying to achieve with the tattoo. So I'm just going to bump the size up a fraction more, just take away some of this white that's just fallen onto the lips, just so we've got those lips nice and solid. Um, and just those little bits that just fall onto the nose. So with the erasing, because we've got those little odd little gaps and the sharp cutouts, what we're going to do is just soften that down a little bit just so it, it sort of sinks in and looks a little bit more natural. So with that layer selected, we're going to click the magic wand tool in the top left hand corner, go down to Gaussian blur, click layer, we're just going to drag that over just until it softens those edges down and you can see straight away around the fingers, the difference that makes it just softens it in. At this point we're going to get the black elements in, so above the white layer we're just going to click plus again, click the airbrushing tool, exactly the same settings, the only thing we're going to change now is just going to be on a black, so we click the colour picker, change that down to black, zoom right in, change the size to, uh, to something that's going to sort of work, so about 4%, we'll just black out this nose, again trying to stay in the lines but again it's not massively important especially towards the uh, like the sharp pointy bit at the top, because uh, we can go back in with the eraser just to sharpen that up a little bit. But we do want a nice sort of solid black finish to it all. Uh, and then we'll drop the opacity down so that, uh, so we get that nice, uh, nice soft makeup look. So just black out all of these elements. Again, I'm trying to stay in the lines, but we are going to be running back over with the eraser in a second just to uh, just to tidy those up a little bit. So with those blacked out, we're going to go top right hand corner, click the layers, go down to the black layer, click the end tool, and we're just going to drop that down until we're at a point that we're sort of happy with. So I'm looking at about 50%. Just gives me that nice sort of grey tone and just gives me that look to the makeup. We're going to click the eraser tool. We're going to make sure that we're on a sort of a fairly small size so two three four percent quite nice and tight and just nip over those edges just so it's nice and neat to that black line so we've got those nice sharp points and again by doing this it just means you're not having to worry too too much about staying within the lines the eraser just sort of takes away those last few little bits so just to make that the, the so just to make those black elements look that little bit more dynamic, we're going to change the size of the eraser up to about sort of 30-ish percent. Drop the opacity down to sort of midway, 50%-ish. And then we're just going to nip away just at the tops. 
of these triangle sections so it gives us this nice fade and then on the nose I'm roughly hitting the iPad about where the lips are which is just going to fade away that bottom section just so that where it merges into the white of the makeup it looks a little bit more natural and less like we've just drawn it on in, uh, in Procreate. So at this point I'm fairly happy with the makeup. Next bit is just going to be adding a few little dynamic elements just to make the piece look a little bit more interesting. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I do this a lot in my pieces where I put these lens flare elements in. Uh, they're dead simple to do and they give you a piece that extra, extra little flare uh, and can make things look a little bit more exciting uh, and less flat and boring. Uh, so we'll click the layers tool, go up to the silhouette layer, which is the highest layer underneath the, uh, the arm template. Click the plus icon, that's going to give us a fresh layer. Click the brush tool, airbrushing, we're going to go down to hard airbrush because we want a real solid line at this point. The colour picker, we're going to change that back up to white. Size, 100%, opacity, 100%, and then just do a nice solid tap to the screen, which is going to give you a big white circle. So to do these lens flares, if you've seen them, you've got two slightly lighter elements that cross over and give you a slightly uh, doubled up tone in the middle. At this point, we're not going to be able to do that because we've got 100% tone there. So if you go into the layers tab, click the end button and just go down and just make that sort of roughly about 50%. Click the layer again, swipe over, click duplicate. That's going to do a, an exact copy of that layer with the same settings, so the same sort of 50% opacity. Click the arrow tool in the top left and we're just going to move that over just so they've got a little bit of an overlap and straight away you can see it's got that lens flare look to it. Back on the layers tab, the highest circle that we've got, we're going to tap that. It's going to bring up some options on the left hand side. We're looking at the bottom of the list for merge down. That's going to merge those two layers together and give us one lens flare layer. Top left hand corner, we're going to click the arrow tool and we're just going to move that over to the left hand side, rotate it a little bit to where we want. Uh, and we're going to leave that lens flare there by the lights so it looks like the lights are shining off. Click the layer tool, swipe over to the left, click duplicate, Click the arrow tool in the top right hand corner and we're just going to drag one down towards the silhouette, the silhouetted figure at the bottom. That's going to give that a little bit of, uh, of interest with that light shining behind it. Uh, we'll click the layer tool again, swipe over, duplicate. We're going to drag this up towards the bottom of the hands but we're going to make it a little bit smaller just so that all the lens flares are the same size. Layers tab, swipe over, duplicate arrow tool in the top left and we're going to drag that towards the bottom of the lights so we've got another flare on the bottom slightly smaller one but overlapping onto the face as well that's pretty much where i want all my lens flares to be so at this point i'm going to click the layers tab again the topmost lens flare i'm going to tap that and then at the bottom of the list we're going to go back to merge down that's going to merge those top two together click it again merge down click again merge down all of those lens flares are now in one layer all together so I can adjust all the settings um, with all of them at the same time. So with that layer selected, we're gonna click the magic wand tool. We're gonna go down to Gaussian blur again, click layer, and we're just gonna drag this forward and backwards just until we get to a point where we've got a nice feathered edge to those lens flares. We're gonna go back to the layers tab, click the end tool, and just change the opacity to a point where they look fairly natural and not too over the top because we don't want to pull too much attention away from the portrait. That's about right for me. We'll just pinch just so we can see the whole piece. And that's pretty much where I'd want to be with the design. I'm happy with where everything sits, where everything works from a composition point of view and how it takes up the space on the arm. And at this point, this is where I'd be showing my client, either sending it over on email, on social media, or face-to-face -face in a consultation. This gives them a real strong idea as to where it's gonna sit on the arm, how it's gonna work with any existing tattoos, what you've got in your mind for the size and where all the elements are gonna be placed. For me, I find this really straightforward to explain to a client exactly what's in your head. Uh, if they're not happy with certain elements because everything's on separate layers still, you can still move things around and manipulate stuff to get the piece exactly where you want it, where your client wants it, uh, and it just makes everyone happy. So there you go guys, that was another design tutorial from start to finish using Procreate. 
focusing mainly on composition and how to sell the designs to the clients. Hopefully you found something interesting from this. Hopefully some of the places that I've clicked and some of the settings that I choose for my pieces are gonna help you guys out just to make your pieces that little bit more dynamic and add in those few extra little elements. If you've enjoyed this, make sure to smash the like button. Any comments and feedback is greatly, greatly appreciated also. So drop those below. All the links to everything I've just shown here, check out the description. But thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all the support and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.